Hi, I'm Dalton Potter from the Potter Violin Company and um, we're here today to talk about uh, how your violin is set up and how uh, different elements of that setup can affect how the instrument plays, how comfortable you are playing it, and also how it's going to sound so that uh, people in the audience can hear you play. What I have on my, uh, on my lap here is just a very nice uh, Italian violin that uh, I have in the shop here. And uh, it was one that needed some adjustment. Uh, one of the things that it needed was a new bridge. Um, one of the things that we do whenever we're working on a, a violin, before we get this out, before we cut to a new bridge, we always want to check to make sure that the fingerboard, that's this long piece of ebony here, is completely even and completely smooth and has the perfect curve to it. Um, because when you go bowing your strings, you want to make sure that the bridge that's down here is curved also, so you can hit your A string without hitting your D string. Well, the curve of the fingerboard also has to match the curve of the bridge, so those, are, those two are related. But before we cut the bridge, we always check to make sure that the fingerboard not only is curved this way, but it also has a very slight scoop to it this way. And the reason for that is that when the strings vibrate, and you can see this is just perfect. There's a little bit of a space at the edge of the right of uh, the ruler. Can you see that? A little bit of space between the, the middle of the ruler and the top of the fingerboard. Okay, that's the way that's supposed to be. Because when the string vibrates, if you think of a jump rope and it's just held at two ends, the string is going to make an arc like this as it goes around when you bow it. So there has to be a little bit of clearance to accommodate the fact that the when the string vibrates, it vibrates in a curve. If you have a completely strat, straight, flat fingerboard, oftentimes you'll get a hissing or a buzzing sound because the string's kind of clattering against the fingerboard because there's not enough clearance in front of your finger where the, string, where the note wants to vibrate. So this, uh, this fingerboard has been what we call dressed uh, or refaced. And uh, when we do that, we also want to check to make sure that the nut, that's the little piece at the top of the fingerboard, uh, that holds the strings, that that actually is in good shape too. Um, people think that the strings are supposed to sit down in the nut and actually they're only supposed to sit on the nut. They would, they would go down into the little slots. Maybe a third of the diameter of the string, some people put them down a half, but no, certainly no more than that. So if you look at your violin and the string is all the way down between two bumps of wood and it's down in a slot, that's not a good thing because it, what it tends to do is pull apart the windings on the string and make it break more quickly and then you have to buy a new one. Okay, so this violin has, I've already cut the bridge on this one and uh, we always want to check to make sure that the feet fit on the face of the instrument just perfectly and uh, that's generally placed right between where the inside notch on the F-hole is. So if you, if you look at the F-hole, that's this part here and then there's a, a little notch on the inside so this bridge is going to sit right there now there's going to be some movement sometimes, that sometimes the bridge will be a little bit further down the face and sometimes you'll see them coming up a little closer. They tend to want to move on their own because of the string tension closer to the fingerboard, so uh, we want to make sure that they do stay where they're supposed to. But this, this particular instrument, the bridge has been on here so long that it's actually worn its own little spot. So we know exactly where this one's supposed to go. Now what the bridge does is it holds up the strings and it holds up the strings high enough so that they're not going to bang against the fingerboard like we talked about before. And uh, it has to have a certain amount of curve to accommodate your bowing and also to accommodate the fingerboard. And uh, we like to see a certain height on one side and another height on the other side. Generally you want the G string to be higher than the E string. People use specific measurements. They'll say maybe it ought to be four and a half to five on the G string side and maybe three on the E string side if we measure it right in the middle here. Um, I, I'm always worried about using numbers because things vary and different instruments are different. Um, but uh, if, it's, if it's much more than that, you'll find that the instrument's very stubborn and hard to play. 